In North America alone, someone needs donated blood every two seconds. In 2017, Canada will need 100,000 new donors to fulfill the need for donated blood. I'm John Fish. And I'm Connor Sanger. We're two grade 12 students, and when we learned that you only have to be 17 to donate blood, we felt like we had to share that message. Now, donating blood can seem like a daunting process, and many Canadians don't even know how to donate blood, and even more are scared of the stigma surrounding it. That stigma being, many of us are scared of needles. We decided to document the process of donating blood at our local clinic with the hope of alleviating the stigma surrounding it. Our donor is our 17-year-old friend, Gora. Step one in the donation process is to fill out an eligibility survey. You can do this online before you come in, and all you have to do is answer a few questions about yourself to make sure that you're not at risk of transmitting any blood transmitted diseases. Once you're all clear, you head back to the waiting room and grab a number and a pamphlet. The pamphlet just has some information about how your blood will be used and the slight risks associated with donating blood. At step three, you have to go through a screening process. It's nothing too intense, but we weren't allowed in with Gorov to film for confidentiality purposes. They ask you a few questions that might not have been covered in the eligibility quiz and test a drop of your blood for low blood iron. Step four is the step where your blood is actually taken. The nurses ask which arm you'd like your blood to be drawn from and assign you a left or a right arm bed. Once you're comfortable, the nurse will try and locate a vein that they can draw blood from. If there's no good vein on your one arm, like Gorov, they'll ask you to move to a different bed and draw from the other arm. Now, this is just for your comfort because a misplaced needle can cause bruising. The nurse will then swab your arm with a sterilizing agent and give you a warm pack for your hand if you're cold. And then, they put the needle in. For anyone who's nervous about like, oh no, it's a needle, what would you have to say to them? Like, did it hurt? It's over in a moment. Like, I looked at, I was like thinking to myself, oh, it's gonna hurt. But then it's like, oh, and the needle's in all the way all, already. And I was really? like, oh, okay. It was, Sweet. Yeah, super painless, super easy. And once the needle is in, a few vials of blood are collected for testing purposes, and about 450 mils of blood is drawn into a bag. This is a blood that will be used to save lives. Overall, the process takes about 7 to 10 minutes and is relatively painless. After that, the nurse will take out the needle and give you a cotton swab to hold over the donation site on your arm. After you've sat for a few minutes, it's time for the best part of the whole process, the free snacks. <laughs> purpose of the free snacks is to get your blood sugars and blood pressure back up to a level where they feel comfortable with you leaving the clinic. It's usually about 10 minutes and it's a good time to just hang out and enjoy the cookies. After leaving the clinic, it's recommended that, especially for first time donors, you get a ride home with someone else and that you don't do anything physically exerting for the rest of the day. Your blood volume should be back to normal within a few days as long as you drink lots of fluids and eat healthy foods. So in about an hour of Gorov's time, he was able to help save the lives of up to three people. He didn't experience much pain, and the pain he did experience was more than compensated for with the free snacks. There's a big shortage of blood right now, and we especially need more men to donate. Blood stores are dangerously low and far below a level of comfort. We need more people to donate. So if you're healthy and you're 17 or older, there's no excuse not to donate. Go to blood.ca and book an appointment. There are people dying who need your help.